We're waiting on a structural engineer to get some engineering done so we can shore up the inside of the house. Before we can get the electrical done and the shiplock done, we've got to get the structural part taken care of. We decided to repaint this front door before Jeff from Carter's Glass gets here to put the new glass in the door package. I'm guessing I may have to retouch up or paint this door in the future when we paint the outside, but we've decided to get black on there before we get the new glass in, which is happening in about an hour. I've got my roller with little black dress and I'm gonna go ahead and get started painting this door before Jeff comes with the glass. All the doors in our house are going to be black. I haven't decided what color I'm gonna paint the interior of this door yet, but I will seal this door up so it's protected. It's mostly in the shade, so we'll see how well DIY paint holds up to the elements. For prep on this, we just went ahead and wiped it smooth and we're painting. The other doors are chippy and crusty, so I'm not really looking for perfection. If you wanted a really smooth finish, you'd want to sand your door first. And if it's an older door like this, be sure to test for lead-based paint. So are you thinking one coat on this? Or are you no, gonna it's going to gonna need two coats on this. They've got some peekaboos. If I was brushing, I probably could almost get away with one coat, but this roller kind of pulls it off a Well, it bit. looks like it's drying pretty quickly, though. It's kind of breezy yeah, today. Yeah, you can see that that side is already drying, so we should be able to recoat in about 20 minutes. I won't do any sealing until Jeff gets the glass in. I just wanted to get most of the paint finished. Some people wonder why I choose to use DIY paint on things like doors over like a traditional latex or oil-based. The reality is the DIY paint just goes on so much smoother and it's not gummy or yucky. And when you've got so many years of latex paint on a door, I just hate to add any more to it. I just feel like this reacts a little bit better and it's worth sealing it to protect it over time. To get down into the details, I'm just using this French round. It makes it really easy to get all the cracks and crevices. The nice thing about DIY paint is that if it does get up on your glass, once it's dry and you've sealed it, you can come back with a razor blade and glass cleaner and it'll come right off. So Zeb's gonna come and tape this off right here where the sash meets the house or whatever it is that this call this is called then everything else is on the inside including this and this door jam are all going to be painted black So short. That looks a lot better black. Well, it's just the whole house was white before and no contrast. All right, so Jeff is here and he is taking off the trim that I just so lovingly painted. Just kidding, I knew it was coming off but now I just have to touch it up. All right, new glass going in. It's so pretty, Jeff. Good. Hang on, tiger. Yeah, it's not bad. There's a couple little spots where the glazing starts to crack, like right here on the bottom. But yeah, yeah, that's 
usually where it does. So we're replacing this little window because it's got a crack right down in there. You can see it. Yeah, right there. Oh, wow. That just split right up when you knocked on that. Yeah. And that's why it's getting replaced. So when you pull the putty out, you want to go with the grain so it doesn't and splinter like up. And travel up in the... Okay. In the wood. And then you want to get those little points out that are holding it in while the putty sets. If I can see one, it's pretty small. There's one right there. gun like we had points in there. That is a handy staple gun right there. Yep. Unless it breaks it. We don't want that. Helpful for do it yourself is that little push point. You put it flat on the glass and then push it in with a chisel like that. You just wiggle it. And that's the same kind of thing, the same, it's called a push point instead of a diamond point. Nice. And then we'll <clears throat> caulk over it. That's all it takes. This swing is right in our way. <laughs> so I'm trying to recreate that bevel like putty finish along that. You always want to make the outside uh, reveal closer to the inside so you can't see up along that edge. Oh, gotcha. Like when you putty, you want to do it that way too. I am loving the way this door turned out. I can't contain my excitement because design stuff totally gets me like super excited. I had no idea how gross this looked with that storm door. It was totally dated, hiding the amazing, beautiful door package that was on here. So Jeff's gonna take the old glass out of here and he's gonna repurpose it. He'll do a lot better job doing that than we would. So we gave that to him. And now we just have to finish the rest of the house. We're gonna seal this door up with some sweet pickens top coat tomorrow. We won't catch that on video, but if you're doing something similar, make sure you're using a water-based top coat. If it's facing the sun and not covered, make sure you use something that's UV resistant. To find the paint products that we used here today, be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com. It helps support our channel, plus there's lots of great things there. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.
hit the subscribe button.